Hello, everybody. Welcome back. So in this uh, second edition of the JFrame with images, let's see if we can remind you guys how to kind of incorporate data structures, right? For this project, you have to incorporate arrayless arrays, 2D arrays, etc. So um, in the previous video, I showed you how to set up one object, one duck object. But rather than, of course, one, what if we just had an array list of them or an array of them? Um, so rather than just a simple instance variable right here, we could just have an array list of duck objects. Um, ducks. Uh, we could also have an array of them, right? So let's show you how to do both. Uh, duck, my ducks is equal to, actually we'll just keep it that. Um, so why don't I do my duck, ducks one and then my ducks two? Keep that simple. So now, of course, where do we set up the instance variables of a class? Typically, we do that in the constructor. So I'm going to go in the constructor, and we're going to do additional setup. So we're going to set up the array list and array of duck objects. Sorry for the typo. There's something happening with my keyboard. Don't know why. Being funky. Um, OK, so. For an array list, we have to instantiate it, right? So we're going to go my ducks is equal to new array list of duck objects. And then for an array, we're going to do my ducks2 is equal to new duck, let's say 10 of them, right? So now the difference between my static array and my array list is that we need a size here. You could actually put in a size for an array list, but all it does is behind the scenes of the, the structure that's used by the array list is actually an array, um, and it just sets up a, an initial size for that. But regardless, right, an array list is always seen as something that will dynamically expand behind the scenes without user interaction. Uh, whereas our array here is forever stuck with room for 10. All right, so the two data structures don't have anything in them yet, right? Oftentimes, this is actually what many of you will forget to do is that, oh, you have an array of objects. You know, instantiating the array and creating the array list doesn't mean you have the objects. You actually have to manually create the objects themselves. Uh, so in this case, let's just create like 10 of them. 10. Wow. I plus plus. I don't know why my keyboard is it's pressing twice for some reason, but we'll just have to work with it. So here we can do okay, my docs two is an array. We're gonna call the duck constructor. Uh remember our image is called duck.gif. Right, and it's right here within the same setup. So this is going to fill up the 1D array. If we want to do the same thing for an array list, now you get to see them side by side. We're going to do add new duck, duck, duck gif. Right. So side by side, you're working with a 1D array, adding objects to it. You're working with an array list, and you're adding objects to it. Perfect. So now that we have set them up, um, we probably want to randomize their location. Um, so at this point in time, you created essentially 20 ducks, right? They're duck objects, but they're all on top of each other. So if we take a look at the constructor, you know, we'll just follow the logic. Uh, it says here that when you create a duck object, you're going to call super. Remember, super is going to call the parent class, which here is sprite and then in sprite uh, we're going to call this is your constructor and it doesn't look like we're actually setting up x and y uh, but of course since they're primitive types they will initialize to zero so i'll say that you know let's say within the duck class um, so after setting up the image, essentially, which is what the super constructor will do, right? The call to super is going to initialize our image. Um, why don't we do something like x is equal to int. Uh, let's randomize it using a math at random times 500 y. We'll do the same thing for y. 
So, you know, for your programs, you know, it's going to depend on how you want to generate these random numbers, the size of your screen, where you want them on the screen, and all that jazz. But essentially now, since we've called the duck constructor, you know, 20 times, it should create 20 random sets of numbers. And um, in this case, uh, we still have one duck on the screen uh, because of the fact that we are actually not using the arrays yet or the array list. We just fill them up with objects, but we're not actually using them. We have this one instance variable duck. I'm actually going to go ahead and erase it and delete it, right? We don't need it anymore. So here's a typical traversal. Um, visit every single duck object within, let's say, the first data structure. And then for each object, call upon the paint method. So we're going to go for int i is equal to 0, i is less than my ducks, one dot size, and i plus plus. OK, so now we're going to go my ducks, um, one uh, dot get. Wow. So this will go to that doc, and then we're going to invoke the paint method. Now, to kind of compare and contrast a, an array list with an array, we're going to do the same thing. Um, this time around, we're going to strictly refer to the 1D array, right? So for 1D array, remember, it's not size, it's length. And then you don't want to use the get methods for a 1D array. Oh. Yeah, let's not eat the remote. Sorry, my dog is about to eat my remote. <laughs> so my ducks too. So square bracket notation for uh, erase. My ducks dot paint. All right, so this square bracket says go to uh, this position in the array, and then in that position in the array, there would be a duck object. And now uh, we should be all set up. Uh, I do have to remove all instances of the duck object, right? So any call to duck, the regular one instance variable that I just removed, I had to remove all the calls to it. Okay, so now um, just to recap, we added the data structures. In the constructor, we set up the objects that goes in the locations in those data structures. And now we're actually invoking helper methods of every object within the array list and within the 1D array. Um, and then when I click play, as you can see, they're like randomly located on the screen. Uh, so now if I wanted to, you know, okay, what if I wanted to move? Well, that's where, you, you know, you can add additional helper methods within the duck class. So maybe the duck uh, needs to move. So we're going to say that, oh, maybe a duck should have a variable vx and by and let's say let's randomly generate values for these um so we're going to go vx is equal to math that random times i don't know 10 minus 5. uh let's see here uh in terms of math that random remember the formula is going to be Int math at random. Wow, this keyboard needs to go times range plus one uh, plus min on the outside. So if you want to determine your minimum number that you want to uh, generate, so here I'm going to take this out of that set of brackets, parentheses. Uh, so now we are generating a, a random vx and vy value. So what we really need to do now, though, is we we need to override the paint method of the parent class. All right, so the parent class is going to do this. But in addition to this, I really want it to update x and y with regards to our velocities. So to override a method, it just means to create the same method within the child class. Private, uh, not should be public. 
void paint graphics G. So if you wanted to copy that from the child class, that's fine. Uh, of course, you want to import any libraries that you need. OK, uh, but what we need to do is we still need the parent to do its thing. So when you need to invoke the parent's version of a helper method, you just want to do super and call paints. Uh, but in addition to calling super um, here, what we want to do is update the location. So x plus equals vx and y plus equals vy. And then we can invoke uh, the paint method. The reason you want to do this is, you know, you're updating the position of the object based on the velocities in those corresponding components. Um, and so now what we have are randomly moving ducks across the screen. So at this point in time, you could add additional if statements somewhere else. You could add helper methods here and there to keep them within the borders. So for example, you can do something like, well, if x is less than zero, maybe reverse the direction of the velocity. Um, so then it would bounce off of the left side of the wall. Uh, if, let's say, if y is less than zero, then you can say vy times equals minus one. Um, which would then reverse the direction of the velocity in the y direction. So anything right now on that hits the left side and the top of the frame should bounce off. Uh, that's what you saw there. But on the right side and the bottom side, uh, there's we don't have any if statements that you know alters those velocity components in any way. Um, for this, you know the bird itself needs needs to really be cropped um, so that it's smaller uh, again i always recommend that you resize all your uh, assets rather than doing it programmatically just because then you don't have to do any sort of like weird new math uh, but of course if you, that's your thing you could do that okay uh, and that's how you can incorporate um you know object-oriented programming data structures uh, into the jframe and with the uh, animation timer Thanks.